Leviathan here, we've heard it over and over again. Today, I'm gonna address the five most common supercar misconceptions. If there's anything I missed, be sure to comment down below and I'll be sure to capture it in my next episode. So let's go for a cruise. Misconception number one, supercars can only be enjoyed on the track. False. Yes, supercars are extremely fun to drive on the limit and really push them hard, but supercars can still be enjoyed if you just drive it spiritedly, well within the limit, or even just normally. It's such a thrilling experience. Let me give you a few examples. If I wanted to hear the engine a little bit better, all I have to do is drop the backlight. And the sound just really starts to resonate, even at a standstill. I am parked right now and my, my heart is racing just by hearing the engine. Or for another completely unique experience, you could just drop the roof and even driving it on normal city speeds, you can still feel that thrill. A completely unique sensation. Not to mention, driving on the track and driving a car like this on the limit takes so much focus, so much control, and so much skill that it's not really a relaxing experience. And once in a while, I like driving a supercar because it just also enables me to disconnect from reality. I'm completely focused on the road I'm driving on, the sensation and experience of the car, and everything starts to just fade away. While on a track, well, that engages my competitive nature. In fact, it becomes a little less enjoyable because I'm really trying to challenge and focus myself and I get extremely frustrated when I don't do as well or I don't progress as fast as I feel like I should have. So, driving on a track is a lot of fun, especially when you get to experience what these cars are all about, but there's a time and a place and you can still enjoy the car just driving it on nice curvy roads in a very spirited fashion. Misconception number two, you always have to drive a supercar in its most aggressive setting, which is false. When I'm driving through horrible bumpy roads, well, my lift system is always up. My suspension and my powertrain is set to its most normal setting, and I keep the car in fully auto mode. However, when I'm getting on the highway or if I want to push my car and drive it spiritedly, that's when I change the settings. Right now, the car is lowering as I'm accelerating through this turn. I switch into active mode, which turns my car into a beast. And I feel that there's a time and place when you should really experience and enjoy the car. I don't want to drive in the most uncomfortable setting when there's no need for it. I'm getting older and I want to be comfortable. So right now, I'm about to get on a fun highway and I'm gonna drive a little bit spiritedly. So I've lowered my car, turned on active dynamics mode, where my suspension and my powertrain is set to its most aggressive setting. My aero is deployed and the car has transformed to a beast. Ooh, air brake just went off, I love seeing that. make myself feel sick. Oh. So, as I said, there is definitely a time and a place and it's perfectly fine leaving your car in auto mode. Look, when you're driving in the city, well, there's just so many things that are happening. You have jaywalkers, you have crazy cyclists, you have horrible roads, you have distracted drivers, so why put myself through that additional stress? Misconception number three, it's extremely hard to drive a supercar. To be honest, I haven't driven that many supercars. A few Lambos, a few Ferraris, and a few McLarens. 
I have to say though, the McLaren I find is the easiest car to drive. I've also driven a lot of normal cars. You guys know I kite board, so I often have to rent a car because there's no way I want to fit all my wet, sandy gear in this car. I'll be honest, I find that the McLaren in its most normal setting is just as easy to drive as any other car. I have fantastic 360 visibility. I have a lift system. I have comfort entry and exit, so it's extremely easy to drive. Even the car on auto mode, it pretty much takes care of everything. I can even do gear shifting just like that, so it doesn't take a lot of skill to drive. It's obviously pretty intimidating when you think about all of the power that you have, but this car is actually pretty fantastic to drive. A reverse cam makes parking very easy. Your mirrors dip as you reverse, so you're not gonna hit a curb. It's actually a very easy to car to drive, and it really depends on what car you're looking at. Obviously, there are cars which are just complete monsters to drive, like a Lamborghini Aventador. Misconception number four is it takes a lot of skill to drive a supercar. Definitely takes a lot of skill to drive your supercar on the limit but just driving it normally or driving it close to the limit, it's very easy to do so. There's so many safety systems that have been built in that I'm pretty comfortable just letting others drive this car because it doesn't actually take that much skill to drive. In the most normal settings, well, it, just, it performs just like a normal car. So it doesn't take skill to drive a supercar, unless of course you're pushing it to the limit. And that's a mistake a lot of people make. They think that just because they're driving a supercar, that they're automatically the best drivers in the world and feel that they can actually push it to the limit. Yes, there are definitely a lot of safety systems that have been built into the car, but it doesn't mean that you can take it to the extreme, that proper practice, skill, and courage. And finally, misconception number five, I haven't really just thought of it just yet, so give me a second to come up with it. And finally, I got it. Misconception number five is that supercars tend to break down a lot or are extremely unreliable. So I've driven supercars quite a bit. It's actually been quite a few years and, and I've actually never had an instance where I was completely broken down and stranded. Yes, it does happen and I highly suggest you have some sort of warranty. It really comes down to how much research and how much homework you do. Obviously, if you buy a car that's just not been well maintained or even rarely ever driven, those types of cars are usually the ones that have a lot of problem points. Yes, the McLaren has broken down a lot, but it hasn't broken down to the point where it's just not drivable. It may have some suspension leaks or oil leaks or some issues with the electronics, but it's always been drivable and I've always been able to have it taken care of. And just having that extended warranty on the car will really puts my mind at ease. Because when things go wrong, things could go wrong very badly. So those are the five most common supercar misconceptions. I obviously haven't captured everything, but those are just the ones that are on the top of my head. And if you're curious to hear about the five most common supercar driver misconceptions, well, I'll be happy to capture that in my next episode. Just be sure to leave a comment and a like. Thanks for watching. Until next time.